Well, good morning, everybody. I am very excited to present to you my thesis proposal, which is titled "Chemical Warfare: The Decomposition of Chemical Warfare Agents Using Multi-Catalyst Polyelectrolyte Membranes." So, the motivation behind this project came from the problem that has happened actually throughout the past century, which is the use of chemical warfare agents throughout the world. Like for example, in World War I, in Northern Iraq, in a Tokyo subway in Japan, and just very recently, a few months ago, an attack in Syria. And the problem with these agents is that they don't happen every day. But when it happens, there are major consequences. And the United States government, particularly the Department of Defense, has been working tirelessly for the past at least 40, 50 years in, in the mitigation or countermeasures for chemical warfare agents. So an example of those are blister agents. Now what are blister agents? Blister agents is usually an oily substance that is uh, weaponized by creating an aerosol. So these tiny liquid droplets in the air, um, they can penetrate your skin, you can breathe them, and what happens is that they affect your eyes, your respiratory tract, so you cre they create blisters in your lungs, in your throat, in your skin. <clears throat> and it eventually leads to cell death, internal cell death, and of course, uh, fatality. Another example of chemical warfare agents are blood agents. For example, the use of hydrogen cyanide, which uh, is very famous, famously used in multiple movies where people have like this little tablet in their teeth when they get captured, right, like a spy or something, they fight it and they suicide. So that's an example of that, and what happens is that it inhibits the ability of cells to transfer oxygen, so you suffocate internally. And finally, and most importantly, uh, nerve agents. Nerve agents such as Zarin, which was used as, just as I mentioned a few months ago, um, is, is a nerve agent that inhibits the communication pathways between your brain and uh, your body, uh, causing muscle paralysis, loss of consciousness, and eventually death. We're going to focus, our project is focused on nerve and blister agents. So we're gonna talk a lot about those. Now what is it, like, how can we mitigate these chemical warfare agents? Well, several of them are used as pesticides, and as such, many scientists have investigated how to decompose these. And of the most general uh, ways that we can present it is, for example, for the nerve agents, there is a hydrolysis reaction. So this is an example of sarin. You have this uh, fluorophosphate, they're called organophosphate compounds, and what occurs is that in the presence of water, water splits and you have this active, active nucleophile that attacks the phosphor. And what occurs is that the fluorine leaves, so there is a PF cleavage, PF bond cleavage, resulting in the intermediate product called isopropyl methylphosphonic acid and some hydrogen fluoride. So after a subsequent hydrolysis step, what occurs is a similar attack, and then this isopropyl group leaves, rendering the final product, which is methylphosphonic acid and isopropyl alcohol. And what occurs is that this molecule right here, methylphosphonic acid, is actually non-toxic. So that is what is desired, is to produce methylphosphonic acid or MPA. In the case of blister agents or vesicant agents, they can undergo hydrolysis or oxidation. So if we consider the oxidation pathway, in the presence of a catalyst and oxygen, the, the sulfur atom is oxidized, creating this 2-chloroethyl sulfoxide, and this is actually the product that we want. What can occur is a subsequent oxidation step which produces this 2-chloroethyl uh, sulfone, and we do not want to produce this sulfone because it has the same blister properties that, than the sulfur mustard. 
So it is important to create a catalyst or control the environment such that a selective production of this component right here is produced. But this agent can also form a hydrolysis uh, reaction in which what occurs is the dehalogenation, if you look at the end, the chlorine groups, they, they go through this dehalogenation step producing this thiodiglycosulfoxide and that is eventually the least toxic compound and that is what actually would be ideal to produce. So now, what is the current technology? The current technology presents these uh, sort of like hazmats where they are made out of a polyurethane foam and incorporated activated carbon. And why do they do that? Because the activated carbon has incredible surface area, a great surface area. So it has a high capability of absorbing, <coughs> absorbing uh, different components. Now, the problem or the drawbacks with these, as they have been reported by uh, Natalie Pomerantz in the, in the Native, is that the heat buildup within the suit is still a problem. So uh, polyurethane and, act and activated charcoal are both hydrophobic. So a soldier or any user wearing this gear is sweating a lot, and especially in a high stress situation. So if that sweat cannot permeate through the clothing, you're gonna have a heat buildup within your body and you can actually suffocate. So this is a problem, it creates fatigue for the soldiers. Another problem with activated carbons is that although they can absorb great quantities of agents, they are inert towards the agent. Um, so now, our research group has done extensive research into several materials and different properties of these materials in terms of uh, computational, from the computational and theoretical side. So when thinking about the solution to this problem, there was already a, an established framework within the research group in the study of a self-assembly of different materials like polyelectrolyte membranes. And our group found that, for example, this nafion, which is a fluorocarbon with this hydrophilic region here and this fluorocarbon hydrophobic region, when upon hydration, when in the presence of water vapor, these hydrophilic domains inside this polymer, they swell and they coalesce, creating interconnected hydrophilic channels throughout the substrate, which allow for the selective permeation of water. And there are examples of other materials, say for example, like Creighton pentablocks or Nexar. You can go to Nexar and look at it online and you'll see that actually sports gear use this material uh, because of the great uh, water vapor transfer. So based on that framework, we came with a solution which is proposed, and this is a multi-catalyst polyelectrolyte membrane. So we thought, hmm, why don't we combine a, a substrate that is, has great breathability with something that is actually active against the agents? And our research group uh, proposed this to the Department of Defense, and uh, here we are today. So, the idea is that this material has two compartments, right? And for the purpose of this talk, we are going to study those two layers separately because we want to understand how they work, how each component works separately so that at the end, combine everything together and have a better understanding. So the first layer is what I call the hydrolytic layer. So in this layer, we incorporate these uh, nafion membranes that I showed you in the previous slide, and we grow these nanoparticles inside the nafion substrate because these metal oxides are known to provide catalytic hydrolysis. For example, nerve agents undergo hydrolysis. On the second layer, which is the oxidative layer, we have what are called polyoxometallate nanoclusters, which have been reported to provide uh, catalytic oxidation and photooxidation. So in today's talk, I'm gonna talk about the first layer, 
which is metal oxides and the substrate. And on the second layer, we're gonna talk about the polyoxometalates, which are two separate uh, studies. So now, what are our goals and our objectives? objectives? Our goal is the development and characterization and testing of these multi-catalyst polyelectrolyte membranes that can serve as, as sensors and as protective self-decontaminating material against chemical warfare agents. That's our project. Now, what are the objectives that are gonna help us achieve that goal? Well, we split it in three aims. And the first aim is the development and characterization of this polyelectrolyte membrane with metal oxide nanoparticle layer. That is the hydrolysis, hydrolysis layer. And understand what occurs in that layer. And the second aim, we want to assess the reactivity of these metal oxides outside and inside these polyelectrolyte membranes. And then in the third step, we want to assess these interesting capabilities of these polyelectrolyte membranes, of these polyoxometalates, as oxidative uh, and photooxidative catalysts, and also because of their colorimetric sensing. So we're gonna discuss in a little bit that these, these polyoxometalates do change color when agents are adsorbed to them. Going ahead, I just wanna summarize what we expect from each of the aims. And uh, within the development and characterization of this pump, the pen pump layer, we want to understand you know, like what factors affect the growth of the nanoparticles. Also, we want to produce these membranes with a variety of different metal oxides. And, uh, and, then, um, and then also study these transport properties of these agents so that we can understand the role of these metal oxides in the membrane to see if that helps us to, be, to develop a, um, an advanced material to block these agents. Within the second specific aim, we want to understand the mechanisms involved in the decomposition of the agents with respect to our materials. And then we want to produce a you know, variety of metal oxides and then understand how the surface chemistry has a role in this hydrolysis of these agents. And finally, in terms of the polyoxometalates, we want to understand these, the color changing uh, capabilities of these, uh, or the colorimetric sensing capabilities of these polyoxometalates to exploit that, and also there's photooxidative oxidative capabilities. So in terms of uh, degree of accomplishments, our group was able to uh, file a patent on technology that uh, I have discussed with you before. We, we published the paper uh, last year in the Angevant Chemie, which we, are, we were very excited about that. We developed a new homemade uh, permeation experimental setup to measure in situ, in real time, the agents, uh, agent permeation with respect to a2 or these hydrolytic decompositions, we have found that our catalysts are active and we are looking into having even more reactive catalysts. And we, can, we found this, uh, this, re this interesting results with forming the mesopores within crystalline nanoparticles. And in terms of A3, we found that this not only have, have they not only polyoxometalites have oxidative capabilities, but also they have a colorimetric sensing capabilities. With that in the project timeline, for specific AIM-1, we are aiming to finish in the next semester, which is the next spring. For the specific AIM, so specific AIM-1, which is metal oxide polymer layer. And the specific AIM-2, which is with reactivity of these metal oxides, we are also, we're aiming to complete these reactivity studies in the next in the next uh, semester and published by the fall. And then finally, for the polyoxometalase, we have fi we have finalized this work, and we are looking into uh, already the manuscripts are, are made, so we're in, in the process of tweaking to so that we can publish. And then finally, we're uh, I'm expecting to finish a uh, dissertation uh, at some point in the spring of 2018, but sooner rather than later. 19, uh, no? 2019, oh, 
pardon me, that's a typo. Uh, this is a list of publications and, uh, and papers to be published, which include our paper in Angelanti, our review, uh, wait, and our patent. Another paper that we're gonna publish in terms with metal oxides, not only in napkin, but with other membranes. Um, our results with respect to the polyoxometallic colorimetric sensing and oxidation of agents. A literature review, a, a paper with respect to the, the permeation of agents through the membranes. And uh, finally, a, a reactivity of these metal oxide and surface engineered nanoclusters. And I've had that, I've been fortunate enough to represent our group in several different conferences with a highlight and uh, we went to Brazil uh, actually just a few weeks ago and had the, had the surprise to get best poster award at this uh, international uh, competition. And finally I want to thank uh, first of all my advisor uh, through the good and the bad times he's been there uh, Dr. John Landers who was actually uh, my mentor in the beginning of uh, my my uh, time here, Dr. Alexei, for his insights. Uh, and then all the collaborators that we have mentioned that in some, in, to some extent, um, they have been the catalyst, uh, the reason that keep me going in, in my project. I wanna thank the art department and the School of Engineering for not only giving me the opportunity to do academic work, but also outside academics. Um, and then my research group members, who also have been there in the good and the bad times, uh, research colleagues, undergraduate and master students that have been through our labs, family and friends, and finally our sponsor, which is uh, the Department of Defense, Defense Threat Reduction Agency. So thank you for everything, and that's my presentation. <laughs>